Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Snake Doc here, and in my hands here I have my Smith & Wesson Sigma SW40VE. Go ahead and show clear here. We're going to dump the mag. And I want to show you guys a neat little trick that maybe you didn't know and maybe you might want to take advantage of. So, I did buy this in the 40 cal version um, for a couple reasons. It's super lightweight. Like, this gun it barely weighs anything. I mean, it, it weighs something, but it's, it's one of the lightest weight. It's like the same weight or just below a Glock 19. So, it's very lightweight. It's got a good capacity, 14 rounds of 40 cal. I thought that was a great deal. Um, I happen to have a bunch of the 40 cal mags sitting right here, you can see. Um, so, what is the little trick, you might ask? Let's go ahead and pull the slide apart here. And here you can see on the internals here. So everybody wants to know, you know, what modifications do you do to your Sigma? So all I did was remove the two springs. So I got rid of the pigtail spring, and then I got rid of the outer spring um, for the dual spring that goes into the sear mechanism there, and it made a tremendous difference in the trigger. Now, what do I have in this bag over here? I have a lot of stuff in this bag. And what this happens to be was a complete parts kit, including the sear block, for an SD9VE. So there you can see how this one's somewhat different. Um, here's the trigger and how that works. So the trigger bar just loops around that and then when you pull back the trigger it pushes that back and then it drops down, comes back. So it just keeps doing this motion right there. Here we can see the pins and the slide lock lever, the magazine release. Um, it doesn't look like they had the magazine release spring in there. That's okay. Here's a locking block. And so here we have a complete slide. So if you guys look around on eBay and Gun Broker and places like that, um, there's a lot of companies that are selling uh, gun part kits that can ship straight to your house because they don't have the firearm receiver. So that is the part that's regulated by the ATF. This stuff is not. So it's just like your polymer 80 kits when you buy your Glock uppers and stuff like that. They ship right to your door. So what do I have here? I got an SD9. VE complete upper you can see here we got our striker block in here we have our striker uh, right here back plate sights um, the sight needs to be drifted I'm probably gonna get an M&P rear sight for that just because it's metal um, here we see the barrel right here really nice barrel nice thick barrel and let's see if I can I thought I had a light right here There, you can see nice rifling on that. So really good condition barrel. Um, no damage or anything. They just, um, for whatever reason, I don't know if they're a police stuff and that where they have to destroy the frame and then they just sell off the rest of the parts, whatever. Um, all I'm going to do in this case is I like to use the Glock recoil spring over the um, uh, Smith & Wesson one, and there's a reason for that. You can see they are the same size, so I use a Glock spring for the Gen 3 or below. Um, Glock 19 or 23 or 32 and the reason why is uh, these are captured from the front where the button retains the spring and on the Smith & Wesson it's this rear that retains the spring and it gets really kind of flimsy and if that breaks the whole thing would eject whereas if this knob broke off for whatever reason you'd still have your spring and recoil rod and a fully operational pistol. So I like using the Glock one, so we're gonna go ahead and put that on our SD9VE. And then we're just gonna take our 40 cal receiver here. There is no difference in the ejectors or anything like that. And there we go. So we have a Smith & Wesson Sigma lower here. You can see and you can tell by the rail, right? The rail's the giveaway. And, uh, you know, I guess uh, maybe just like the shape here is slightly different on the SD9. Um, but there you can see the slide fits on there and operates no problem. Everything else on them is identical. Um, trigger pull feels really nice, um, especially since I removed those two springs. Reset's a little long, but that's a good defensive trigger. Um, let me show you that again. So here's my take up. It gets a little stiff and then press through. 
Um, so what would I do? I only have 40 cal mags. Well, I happen to have some 9mm ammo here. 40 caliber magazine. Uh, we'll be able to see this is the 14 round, and it says right there, 40 Smith & Wesson. Can you use 9 rounds in there? Yes. You definitely can use 9mm rounds in there without problem. So there's 4, 5, 6... Seven. Well, I only grabbed nine out here. It's not a big deal. I know you can fit more than the 14 in there, but there you can see. So you can use it. It's not going to come flying out of your feed lips. You don't have to squeeze it. Um, I'm not going to obviously chamber it right here because I'm indoors. I'm not in a safe, safe shooting environment to do something like that. But um, we'll pop the rounds out of there and show that they would um, work just fine in there. So. There you go. If you can pick up one of these slides for cheap, I got this for about 130 bucks ship for this entire parts kit um, from Gunbusters, I believe it is, on Gunbroker. And you know, it comes with everything, it's ready to go. Um, if you have a Sigma and, or if you have a Sigma 9 and you want to do. The only thing I'm not sure about is, um, well, I guess it would be the same, the opening, because um, I think it's just the barrel diameter. That's different. So if we, uh, I'll pop it off again here and we'll show them side by side and show how similar they are. And get that recoil spring out of there. And again, you can pick up Glock recoil springs for like under 10 bucks shipped. So, but here you can see they didn't change anything other than the aesthetics of it. So if you look at it, um, the, the profile right here of that part of the barrel is slightly different, but otherwise they're exactly the same. And um, the difference here is that you have this tapered section right here, and then you have your front cocking serrations. So other than that, and the sight change, obviously, they changed um, to be an M&P dovetail in the rear, and then the front where this can use a Glock front, um, this would have to use an M&P because it is dovetailed. So that's it. Hope you guys learned something from the video. Stay tuned for more uh, Sigma videos. They're definitely not going to let me monetize this one. So I always appreciate thumbs up and go watch some of my other stuff. Go comment on my shield holster giveaway video. I'm still trying to get rid of that holster. So be sure to go over there and uh, make, leave a comment and give a thumbs up. Thanks for watching. Always shoot safe.